Welcome to winter. If you are thinking, oh, so majestic, oh, great. Not so much. It's pretty much, uh, we're kind of sick of it. Or I am. It's like a f almost a foot of snow again. So I have to break this uh, eggshell from this uh, crappy Kinder Surprise thing. Uh, if you're watching me from uh, s south, uh, it's two things you don't have. Snow and Kinder Surprise. So let me uh, break the shell and we'll move on with uh, today's video. Yeah, I'm not super enjoying myself. Been uh, removing snow like that for 30 years now, almost. So, I if it's new for you and you like it, good for you. But uh, me, can't wait for the for spring. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna try camping with this. Well, pulling my travel trailer with this. So gonna be fun. I did pull it already with the truck, but only once to go send it to storage. All right, so let's talk about uh, what today's video is gonna be about. Uh, I've had some comments about uh, the plugs and such. I'm probably gonna do a short video to make a test, know uh, what happens, how much juice can the plug uh, get out. But today we're gonna talk about preconditioning the battery preconditioning the cabin yeah that's two uh, different thing and uh, putting a schedule on your truck so whenever you leave in the morning the uh, cabin eating is already on and you have a good temperature uh, inside so stay tuned for that all right so let's let's look at uh, preconditioning the uh, vehicle so when we are talking about preconditioning, there's uh, just having a comfortable temperature inside the vehicle when you start driving in the morning. So let's start with that definition of it. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, what happens when you charge a battery that's uh, cold, when you get uh, to a charger, and uh, how that affects charging speed. So first, first part is that inside the truck, you can press on the small home button here. To get all your apps uh, if you want an overview of all those uh, most useful apps you can uh, watch one of my other videos what you want to find is the charging one uh, right now it says cannot charge because i am plugged in but my charger is off schedule so right now it's not sending any power to the truck it may change during the day during uh, times when I, I allow it to charge uh, charge assist is a different thing. It's so you can connect uh, different accounts in the uh, charge uh, from your Chevrolet application when you charge at uh, different charging partners. Uh, I'm not using that right now and we're not charging uh, at uh, high speed anywhere. So uh, that's not what this is about. And this is the upcoming schedule. So this is where you want to go. So what that allows you is to create a charge schedule. But what that means is that the truck will automatically start charging if it's plugged, of course, uh, according to your schedule. And when we click here, I already have one created, but let's try and uh, just remove the days. And Okay, it doesn't want to save it. Uh, let's try and make a new one. All day is already scheduled. Okay. Ah, save and close is at the bottom. Makes sense. Let's delete it for now. All right. So no schedule created. So this is what you should see the first time you get in. Create a schedule. And what it does is that exactly what it says on those days so let's say all days of the week i want to leave my house at 7 a.m and i want my truck to be charged at about 80 percent or at 80 percent um you would do that if you uh for example um had a r very regular schedule and you would always leave your house about at the same time you can of course create different schedule for different days of the week and uh, have the different departing time. 
and then you can uh, click here for free conditioning so that will uh, allow you to um, set your cabin temperature does it allow me to set the cabin temperature oh it doesn't seem like it funny stuff so what it does is that is that it will try to get the truck charge up to 80 percent and um, have the cabin temperature at 72 at 7 a.m every day you've selected so when you press save and close that should be done automatically if you want to disable the schedule you just push the, push the radio button there and uh, schedule it off your vehicle will charge when plugged in so it automatically manage when to start charging uh, it will look at the input from the charger that you have and try and do that if you are charging level one which is like the trickle charger um, it will pretty much mean that it's charging all the time because it's charged so slow. Uh, in my opinion, that's what's going to happen. Uh, you can do that uh, and uh, enjoy a comfortable cabin there. Uh, I call it cabin because in French we say cabin, but uh, it's pretty much the interior of the truck, essentially. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what the uh, preconditioning in uh, ohm charge schedule is. Couple of uh, annoyances. Uh, in my experience, I have uh, not used that because um, uh, it seems to be pretty hard for the truck to start a new charge by itself. It will ask you to disconnect and reconnect the charger. Uh, at least that's what it's been doing for me. So I'm using the schedule from my uh, charger not from the truck I also cannot um, access the schedule from my uh, Chevrolet app because I'm not paying a premium for the OnStar connectivity uh, so uh, to me this is not a super useful feature so uh, that's my opinion of it but uh, there you go uh, all right so let's talk now about preconditioning your battery when you're doing a uh, high speed charging session so just a quick reminder um, charging this truck with a level one charger should take uh, something like 300 hundred hours meaning that if you plug it in a regular house outlet and use the trickle charger it's gonna take a really long time but uh, you'd be surprised how that can be sufficient for most uh, people uh, regular day-to-day -day driving level two is where you have a real charger uh, from home you can have it in a dryer uh, plug or uh, hardwired and uh, this is about 10 times faster so a full charge from zero to 100 which i would like to remind you almost never happens because you never charge in one go from zero to full you can charge any night anytime anytime you're at home which is very often uh for most people it would take about 33 hours for a full charge uh which is still quite fast you'd be surprised how much idle time you actually have at home uh for a uh, for a vehicle uh of course everything everyone is different though and then you have the super high speed ones the super high speed chargers and then uh, those are uh, astronomically fast uh, depending on the on which one you can find on the road you can fully charge uh, the truck from uh, zero to a hundred in uh, the worst case about four hours and in the best case seven times faster than that so maybe half an hour 40 minutes uh, for super fast charger so this truck charges fast and uh, I'll explain more about my plan for uh, long long uh, distance traveling uh, how this trucks uh, enormous battery capacity makes it very very nice to travel even though you may charge for a bit longer uh, we'll talk about that all right, so first thing is you want to go to the uh, Google Maps icon here because the OS of this truck is uh, uh, Android Automotive. 
not to be confused with Android Auto, which is something different. It's just the operating system for the whole infotainment system is made by Google and licensed by Chevrolet or licensed by them to Chevrolet. Um, so baked in, there's Google Map. Uh, you can also use your phone, uh, Google Map, through Android uh, Auto or um, uh, Apple uh, Car, and then use another app. It doesn't have to be Google Map. But uh, for the preconditioning to work, I believe you do have to use Google Map from the built-in uh, OS. Otherwise, it won't work. So you can always search for a charging station. And uh, you have different options, uh, uh, different types of charger, uh, fast ones, blah, blah, blah. You, we can look in the settings, and these are the speed settings. So you can say, for example, I don't want the slower ones. I only want the really fast one. So this is my preferred one, of course, but uh, not all the time. All right, so let's try those filters. So now we, we've used those filters. Uh, hopefully, uh, it should find stuff by itself. One other nice feature, when you press the gear button, you have a root options. And you can say, prefer energy efficient routes. I don't know how that affects uh, traveling uh, that much, though. So uh, let's try and do just a regular, uh, uh, regular trip. We're going to go and do a super long range trip. We're going to go to Gaspé, which is real far from here. So yeah, 10 hours, 13 hours with charging. So yeah, it recommends to me three charging stops with three hours and four minutes charging. It's a crazy long trip. I wouldn't do that in a day, ever, 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 <laughs> ever. So those three hours are probably times where you're going to eat, you're going to sleep and stuff like that usually. So it sounds scary or looks scary. Shouldn't really be. Uh, all right, so let's look at uh, the destination and let's look at the charging stops for fun. So this is where it recommends that I charge. All right, so it recommends I drive three hours, then charge here. And uh, yeah, it tells me uh, lots of stuff nearby. And uh, as far as I know, it should precondition the battery if it needs to. Um, so that's uh, that's very convenient. So what what does preconditioning means is that uh, if your battery pack is cold, there's less efficient power uh, flow uh, in it. So your uh, whenever your destination on Google Map is a charging station, it will it should automatically calculate how much time until you get there. In roughly 20 minutes before you get there, it will start to eat up the battery pack if it's really cold outside. Uh, so I don't know how much in Fahrenheit that is, but um, the optim optimal to charging temperature should be around 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, so what it's trying to do is before you get to the charger, it's going to try and stabilize the temperature of your battery pack to around 20 degrees Celsius. So what that should do is that you will get the full speed from the minute you plug in the uh, the quick charger. And uh, so it's just so you don't waste time there. Although you may waste a little bit more energy and be less power efficient uh, for your uh, mile per uh, kilowatt hour. Uh, but you'll wait less and charge faster. This only should apply, in my opinion, when you're over about a 100 kilowatt uh, charger, though. So remember when we were looking at uh, charging stations here, when you click there, we were looking at the uh, filters, and there's one that says 50 kilowatt or faster. Even though you may be under 20 Celsius for your battery pack, you should be able to pull easily 50 kilowatts. So I've only seen slowdowns whenever you are um, uh, using 150 kilowatts 
or around 100 kilowatts. You may go down at about 80 or so until the battery is at the right temperature and then it will uh, it will uh, be uh, going faster and faster. But by that time, you may already have been charging for a little while. So uh, usually batteries charge faster when they're low. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it, it will take more time if you don't use precondition. Me, I usually don't do many road trips in the dead of winter and super cold, but um, I wouldn't really uh, use the Google map from this. I would use the Google map from my phone, which I use through Android Auto. So I don't really use that preconditioning so much. And I usually factor in very smooth and uh, not like I have to stop after four hours of driving. I have to charge fully as fast as possible and start again. Uh, there's a rule of thumb about uh, driving usually. It's the ABC always be charging so just plan your stops just plan your your charging around your stops and not your stops around your charging i don't know if that makes sense but uh usually uh, uh i i kind of enjoyed the trip there and uh just uh charge where uh it's convenient and such uh and also if you're always charging at the fastest rate um, you usually pay more, so it kind of pays off uh, because you pay by energy, not by time. Uh, so usually pays off to take the slower charger for longer your time. And um, to me, if you're charging at something above 50 kilowatt or faster or 150, what's going to happen is that if you go to a restaurant or something and then you're eating and then... You get an alert on your phone, you gotta move your car, it's already charged at 80%. But if you're charging at 50 uh, kilowatt, that won't happen because you will have leftover time, you'll be fine. And yeah, so the enormous range of this truck uh, really is a boon there for long ro road trip because you have the option of slowly charging, taking your time, paying less, and not being rushed to move the, the, the truck. I have not uh, charged in super fast charger um, as of yet, but uh, one of the uh, advantage that could be a disadvantage of the Silverado EV is that it's quite stealth. It doesn't look like a, an electric truck. It looks like a truck. So people who see you at a charging space, unless they see the charger plugged into the truck, they may think that you're, uh, you're trolling them and you're, you have a gas uh, truck and you're parked in a charger because you you hate EV and it's uh, the absolute opposite. So uh, yeah, uh, so yeah. I hope that uh, cleared up some uh, things about uh, preconditioning the battery and preconditioning the cabin, which are two different things. So usually people just say preconditioning. So I figured I'd make a video about both subjects. So. Thanks for sticking around. I hope there wasn't too much rambling and uh, I'll see you next time.